Good afternoon guys, welcome back. Um, so today I'm going to sort of do a year end sort of review going through um, journalistics and stuff. I'm also doing this from my desk on the second floor just because of all the Brexit news and stimulus stuff going on at the moment. So if you hear any sort of background noise from the squawk etc then um, that's where it's coming from where any guys talking. Um, that's what's going on. But I'll get straight into it today. Um, I'm going to do like a little short storyline of this year, etc. Then the journalistic stats of the whole year, um, first six months and the last six months, and just a couple of sort of things I want to work on towards um, next year and sort of the goals and sort of targets, etc. Um, but just a storyline quickly. So I think going back from sort of the beginning of the year. Um, you know, June was really the key point where things changed and sort of I sort of managed to find something, especially sort of trading gold and sort of this sort of like breakout pattern that was going on and I started to trade that more and more and that's when you started to see like my P&L swing much more, you know, the, the risk reward you started to see when, you know, you managed to put some size on something. So that's when I would say that the year changed for me in June, July, and then moving forward, then sort of I've noticed to see that that the technical skills for me have developed better, you know, that sort of edge, and then the way of my execution hasn't really followed in the same way. So that's where that sort of issue sort of not, not fell apart, but the technical issue was on, was more ongoing. So that's where everything sort of changed for me. And then sort of coming into sort of the end of the year, the other sort of edge was the trading, the news, etc. That was the other sort of issue um, that definitely sort of developed. And now the hands are standing. And again, it's sort of that risk reward scenario where you're putting size on trades and you're really sort of noticing a difference, you know, and then you're sort of developing on how you can hit multiple markets as well. You know, on comments, so your P&L is going to get larger. You know, you're going to hit three markets with more size. You're going to make, you know, you know better P&L. So, you know, sort of the visualization of all of this coming together in, is exactly what I was doing. It's just sort of the edge you see from watching the Elite Trader videos of how, he, you know, he executes and you see my vaccine videos and some other, you know, Brexit comments that I've hit and, you, you know, you're trading multiple markets, etc. So that edge definitely developed at that time. Then obviously speaking over the vaccines previously, um, doing really well across those two. So especially this is what happened and a lot of the market focus was on these, sort of my, not my, my technical edge, you know, didn't decrease. You know, it didn't get sort of worse. It's just maybe the market changed and I didn't adapt fully to it. And I, you know, I wasn't really doing so well, you know, sort of actually, not before, I was doing okay before. And especially afterwards as well, um, like I put in the last bit. So since the vaccines, I found it quite difficult. You know, my, te my technicals have been there, but it's sort of the execution, you know, the opportunities have decreased, you know, the market's much quieter, the volatility's dropped sort of around I think the 20 on the VIX, so it's not very volatile, you know. Everything's trading all time highs at the moment, as again, you know, SP's at the top, so the volatility does shrink. Um, so you have to be much more careful, um, and you have to become very disciplined. So, and then that, that's when that adds into the opportunity you've got less opportunity, you've got to be more disciplined across everything. So, that's the sort of storyline of how this year's gone. So, it's definitely from June before that. PL was quite steady and sort of grinding up a little bit. And then, you know, that technical edge developed, you know, started to take advantage of moves on that, especially in the gold as we see. And then vaccines and the comments and that edge definitely developed probably the most. Especially, you know, you really prep for that. And then it's been a bit quieter since and I haven't really performed you know, to the best of my ability, shall we say. Um but these are the these two slides here are the beginning of the whole year, um, but I'll come back to them and I'm going to start with the first six months and then the last six and then we, we combine the we can we can combine the two. So as you see sort of the P&L from the beginning of this year was sort of gradually just sort of grinding its way up 
this is where I had a little bit of a break. And again, sort of the May period, again, having a little bit of a break sort of when you when I was trading at home. So from sort of the mid-March to April was sort of your training at home part, which, you know, it was very, it was much more difficult than trading uh, in the office. And I had a couple of weeks off, come back, and that's when things started to pick up a little bit, sort of into the June period when I'm coming back to the office. Um, the distribution, etc. I mean, pretty obvious trading, sort of the end of the day or the mid period of the day, sort of US Open, trading it much more. You can see by the PL performances, down, up, flat, down, up, down. So it's quite a bit, a bit messy. You don't, you had a lot of late moves as well in that period. Um, sort of, which is another thing you're developing over time. You know, there's sort of late moves that are happening. So it's all about different, you know, adaptation to the market and how things, so you can get early moves that can be happening in like the Europe session. That's where you can then take advantage of that, but I wasn't doing too particularly well. And then coming into sort of, you know, the market, sort of what I've been trading, sort of how I've been putting things together on different structured trades performance by the day of the week, you know, distribution and the, your time you're holding things and trades. But I will start off with the, the two P&L scenarios on, of, you know, where I've been doing well, should we say. So, especially as we know that oil and gold were the, definitely in the main markets in the first sort of six months of the year for me. As you can see, the P&L difference between the other two is, you know, quite substantial. And obviously then you can look to, the you know, the cash breakouts, pre-cash breakouts in the comments. So these more momentum driven, more aggressive style type of trades, etc. You know, that's where I seem to do and take more advantage on things, you know. So other than these sort of reversals, risk events and these sort of pointless I've got started to call them pointless trades, where it, there's no trade really, you're just getting in for sort of the sake of getting in. So that's where you like losing a bit of money across these. Again, it's sort of the central, uh, not uh, the risk events is where like you got the PMIs, the um, all those type, of, you know, all these different risk events, you know, non-farm, all of that. That's where I don't really do too well because again, the market will change depending on what like the theme, the theme is. So if the PMI start to become something like the ones we previously have had have been quite rubbish, even though they've been really big beats on both of them or in the past two months. And then once they start to come back and play and they're much more effective, then the things will change. Um, but again, it's definitely the oil and the gold and, you know, hitting comments and things. I wasn't doing too well, as you can see, across S&P, Eurostocks and the Bund. Never really been the best of markets to, to trade. And especially cables hitting comments about Brexit. You know, it just doesn't reward me whatsoever. Um so coming into that, I was quite pleased with, you know, the way I was doing those sort of trades and at the beginning of the month. But again, I got to sort of the performance by the day of the week. Monday is considerably sort of the worst day. Um, definitely the worst market to trade. Oh, sorry, not to trade, but the day to trade for me. Mondays seems to be all starting on a bit of a negative and then I'm sort of making it all back so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday much more positive so it's sort of like coming into next year you've got to think of how you come into a Monday you know, don't be overly too aggressive you know, might be nothing but then you can pair it to the trade distribution it, you know, Mondays are considerably traded less but lost the most um and Tuesday traded the most and I, I made the least. So there's a comparison of not trading much or, you know, trading too much and trading less. You've got to find your sort of medium in, in between and the understanding of, you know, what sort of trades happen on a Monday or don't evaluate as a Monday and just take it every single day with no weekend in the, the market just sort of, you know, rolls over. Um, this is the most probably the one of the most important ones for me. The distribution. Um, I take quite a lot of losses. You know, twenty-seven percent of winning trades, which isn't too great. 
So it's something for me to improve that, especially next year, reduce the amount of losses and try and if I can bring this blue part round to sort of something like that, you know, 40 odd percent, 50 percent would be great. Oil, gold, and the bund, mainly oil and gold, you know, distribution. Again, you can sort of tell by the P and L. You're going to trade those markets the most. And then we're moving on to performance um, by the by time. So it's all about that for me, holding your trades a little bit longer. Definitely seems to reward me the most at the beginning of the year, where I felt probably probably a bit more comfortable with, with what the markets are because now they sort of changed it, and so you got to adapt. But I sort of remember how they were at that time. So again, it's sort of the standard we sort of see with that, and especially this. That's what that's the sort of the beginning of the month or the beginning of the year. So then you move on to the next part of the year. So the last sort of six months. So it sort of starts off well, from the first of July. So it starts off quite flat. Obviously, this like spread bit is you know with your like commissions in between. If you're wondering why there's two gross and net PNL. So sort of sideways, it does start to swing a bit more because you know you're making a bit lies and making it back, losing it. That's sort of created a sort of breakout period along sort of this line here sort of peaking each time and then I this is what I was doing I was making money and then I was giving it all back and then making it back then giving it all back then I can't something again next year is to try me much more consistent I'm not giving much back and then having that sort of breakout <laughs> type scenario where you're just going sideways and try and do it like, like a stairs like we've done here which is both the vaccines etc and then as was just said, the vaccines come into play, and then since that, I've sort of done the sideways bit, which is fine. I don't mind the sideways bit um, at all. But again, it's sort of very similar to the beginning of the year, where much more trade in the afternoon. The morning trade slightly dipped a bit. Um, they've had a little bit of trade overnight because you had the um, elections and some other events sort of overnight. Not much trade in the, um, the evening. But much seems to be lesser and flatter trade across, you know, the performance sort of by the hour, which is you know quite interesting. A lot of this, you know, coming from the the vaccines, etc. Morning trade again hasn't really followed through, but much more flatter trade in the afternoon. Not sort of the up up and down, you know, you know making money, etc. So moving on to. Um, just exactly the same sort of scenarios that we had in the previous slide, the, sort of the P&L, trade distribution, etc. So I think, you know, again, much more profitability across each of the markets. Um, you know, cables up this time, we've had a lot of Brexit stuff. Oil, I haven't traded much of oil, especially in the last six months. I haven't traded enough of it. You know, I just generally haven't felt like it's been so rewarding to me and the, the price action has changed a lot so again it's just adapting to that um, again some more comments I think that come as you can tell especially the comments of you know that type of edge for me is definitely improved um, and the cash breakouts again so it's again it's the same scenario of taking advantage of these breakout moves these comments these pre cash moves haven't done so well on but you're reducing the sort of amount of losses that you've got here compared to the last six months. That's the first six months. So there's definitely been some improvement for sure. Um, Euro stocks being the best market for me in the last six months, followed by gold, bund, and S and P. But another th another thing, you look at how much you trade now, and sort of that midweek scenario seems to be the most. Mondays have pushed up, and Fridays have gone much further down. You know, trying to sort of relax on a Friday. I've had you know not take too much you know before the weekend it's the same sort of scenario as a monday you know you try and take you, you may step back etc going on yeah so then performance by the day of the week substantially had both vaccines on the same monday so it's a big shift across the board on the mondays tuesdays you know up again and sort of fridays and wednesdays aren't so great so i'm just deteriorating towards the end of the week you're getting tired etc maybe know a whole year of you know early mornings late nights I don't know if that makes much of a difference but something that I can sort of think of and the Thursdays are small up so it's definitely sort of more 
again the choppy sort of bit of PL, but sort of grinding away. And then the same scenario of performance by time. Holding trades again, you know, the hour, the four hours make a big difference. You know, I, I actually did click on these across the whole year as well and you know, the the win the win rate to loss rate is about forty seven percent or something like that across these. So so you're going into the next year and you're going, Well, if you're making you know, if you're fifty fifty holding trades for over an hour to over four hours then I need to exploit, you know, have a look and explore what sort of edges in here rather than going back further back and looking at these smaller time where you're not making as much and your win rate is much worse. Like you can see here, the win rate here is twenty two percent. You're not scratching many trains but you're taking too way too many losses, you know. You know, you've got to try and swing this round and that's due to then sitting on your hands much more. Yes, you can make money by having a, a less hit rate, but you can bring that round and reduce your losses, you're gonna make substantially um, you know, more, shall we say. Going into so the distribution in the trades definitely sort of changed. You've seen gold be quite steady, thirty percent of my trades, Euro stocks as well. I started to trade that quite a lot, especially when the volatility picked up. Oil's really dipped off and the boons come up a little bit as well. Shifting your markets, you know, seeing when there's sort of some type of edge you can have, you know, when the volatility picks up, the Euro stocks is usually quite quite good and there's a nice flow to it. And that's sort of the last sort of six months in a, in a quick sort of debrief of looking at where you've done well. So it's sort of like, so for me, you know, over Christmas, you're going to have a look at all these different sort of attributes you've got and stats is something I like. And you can really sort of start to trigger by like I did by looking at those sort of four hour, four hour and hour periods. But we go back to sort of the whole, whole year, shall we say, and go... Sort of as I've sort of mentioned this already, a steady sort of sideways, not really doing much, and then the P and L starts to swing. When you're sort of developing that edge and understanding the technicals much better, or however you trade, and you start to see that oh, you can see a bit of risk reward in something, and then ah, oh, and then you give it all back because the market then changes. It's then about adapting quicker and not losing what you make back, um, and then learning, you know, vaccines and comments. You can then look to develop that um, and that's all and that's, again it's the same as building a comment edge or technical edge you know you put more size on each time you hit more markets so trade distribution I'm not really gonna say much too much about that very similar compared to compare the two a bit more sort of a nicer look maybe because you got a bit more upside in the afternoons and the mornings as well aren't too great so maybe you need to trade less less in the mornings you know, so let's see where what trades are working in the mornings and what aren't in the mornings you know depending on volatility and what time of year you've got all those types of you know scenarios and then going into the same stats again so Monday, Fridays, very similar amount of trade. Again, the midweek across the two is substantially much higher. Monday P and L, Tuesday P and L, Thursday P and L. That you know that's good. Obviously, you have that exception of these vaccines, but that's quite nice to have. And Wednesdays, Fridays aren't too bad. They're a little bit down, but you can only ask questions. What happens on these types of days? And again, going into. Um, the market you did the best on this year. So the market's done the best, obviously, Euro stocks, then gold, then the Bund, um, oil, S&P, uh, cable, then BTPs and Euro, um, made nothing on. Um, in fact, lost a little bit of um, p and on there. So then we can look, and then you want to see where this sort of edge, again, see, click on it, and look where you know, the trade's coming from and then you can then you evaluate and you just, that's where you want to then sort of dive in a bit deeper so that's what I'm definitely going to be doing sort of over the Christmas period when you got you have a break you know have a look and see what you're doing really well on pull things apart and try and dive in so next year you you under, your understanding is a bit better and then you can then just just you know when these trades come back you then to try and take more advantage and have you trade with that high conviction all that's just something that I really want to improve on for, for next year. 
Um, again, same scenario, breakouts, comments across the board, across the year, very good. Reversals, risk event for central banks, something I've got to get better on for sure. Um, and those pointless trains are, you know, they're just, you know, you're always probably going to lose money on these pointless trades um, when you're just buying a high for the sake of buying the high or selling a low for, you know, the sake of it because you're a bit frustrated. Those scenarios. Again, distribution, you've got the 25% sort of, you know, one in four trades, which isn't really good enough. You know, if you're making really great P&L, then it's, you know, it's not that bad, but you don't want to be winning one in every four. You want to sort of increase that a little, you really want to increase that to sort of like 40%. I mean, that'd be great because you're taking a lot of losses here. Um, I think that was when that did, that bar disappears. You'll be able to see there's quite a lot. So yeah, fourteen hundred to five five hundred winners isn't great. Oil still across the year most most traded product followed by gold, um, and that was S and P and Euro. Uh, no, Bund and Euro stocks. And then S and P. So again, those sort of the higher, you know, more rangy markets for sure traded much more. Then coming into sort of those thicker markets, especially when they're much more volatile and so on and so on performance again by the time for the whole year was as we've sort of seen already in the you know the other two this part of my trading is much better than what this like say if this is like scalping or something like that or these comments that you get hurt on very quickly so my holding time is much better compared to this less holding time so when you're getting stopped out quickly you know that the trade's not the right one or you're holding for a longer period of time and you've got much more from you know much more conviction and trade time because not every breakout is five minutes you know you can have a nice 150 tick move might might, might, might take you know an hour or, or you know good you know more than half an hour as we're seeing here or you know it could take a couple hours so across the board like you look back at the year i mean it's it's, it's not too bad it's okay i mean i'd on technicals, I would like to do much better, especially on the execution front. Comments, especially that edge, you know, that edge would just keep developing and developing, and your narrative of how the markets are and what's the theme and what's not the theme um, currently. So that's sort of that's the sort of the stat side of it. So the stats, you know, they look they look nice, they look bad, but then we can try and with a good thing on the journalistics, you can dive into it in much more bit more detail and you can compare and you can go into like i said in different time frames and just just different markets different times of the day and everything but go on to sort of these targets and goals for next year so just got five little bullet points i've already mentioned sort of the win rate you know again that can be helped by sitting on your hands and you're trying to take those more highest of conviction trades you know you want to look to explore them in greater detail as well next year because then once these come around and round and round, you know, you're just going to have to try and increase your size on them each time because your conviction is so high. And again, it's just developing that technical wedge and, you know, much more deep. I'm going to change the way I'm going to debrief as well also and then watch some trades back on how you, where you should be executing um, much better because that's what, that's what lets me down the most is the execution process. Again, like I've put underneath, you know, means much more of an improvement. You know, again, look into those trades much more deeply. And identify and identify what I do wrong, and you know how much risk you're taking. If you're overcommitted or you're undercommitted. Um, also, a main, quite a big main thing for me is sort of this better self-belief and the confidence, and I say the less fear of losing after you like do well or you're not doing so well. You have a sort of maybe the fear of losing and like you're not taking the trades you should be. You know, that comes down to the lack of probably self-belief and confidence that you may have. But once you're taking these high conviction trades on a repetitive basis, you can be more aggressive. So, you know, and try and, you know, use the fear to, you know, excel on those good trades that you do take. So that fear you've got, put that into the trade, and then you can look to try and take advantage that way. And, you know, less holding myself back, you know, when the trades are there. And again, it's more of the continuation and the repetition of the process and the approach you take each day so keep doing it keep developing it keep developing a new way of debriefing something that really takes the like goes real deep into sort of you know 
your debriefing way and you're taking real understanding. So what I've put at the top here above, that's what you want to be doing. You want to be pulling these trades apart and identifying all the patterns, etc. Um, and again, this is yeah the repetition of this execution. Repeat the same style of execution, and you know you'll be able to do much better because you understand how you want to execute that trade. You understand it's going to break from here to here. You just sort of understand how it's going to move, um, etc. And again, it just increases your reds. If you're trying to develop um, and bring a better results. So that was sort of a little quick review of what this year's happened or brought to me and the sort of stats to show and a different way of looking at something else if you haven't got these stats and then just a couple of pointers and like the storyline you know over the Christmas period you want to be doing that you want to have a look into your game don't want to have two weeks off come back in January and you've not looked at anything because you're just going to be in the same place as you are today. If you find this video interesting, if you want to go deep into the Axia training method and how a trading team of seven figure traders develop setups and strategies and how they learn to build the most profitable trades across all market environments, then join me in this workshop. Now in this workshop, you're going to learn three powerful steps we use to train all our traders on both our London and our Poland trading desks to help build incredible levels of consistency how to predictably understand which setups work and which don't. You're going to learn our two main strategies for how we perfect our trade timing before we enter every single trade. You're going to learn the VEL concept, which is our one and only technique we use to leverage our largest trades. You'll also learn how to avoid trading setups that don't work, how to avoid those large losses, and our main method we use to identify them that saves our traders significant amounts of capital. Finally, you will learn how our traders use the power of network learning to find market patterns quicker than ever before, so you shortcut that learning curve. In the workshop, we want to program your awareness of elite performance, to program your ability to choose the right setups, and program your ability to be a consistent trader. So the trades that you execute become more simple and clearer. And I can tell you this, you'll never see the markets the same again. You'll never look at the markets with a narrow view of getting lost in all the noise and confusion. You'll take a first step towards a deep edge market awareness. I cannot wait for you to join me in this workshop. And I think you're in for a massive paradigm shift in your understanding of how to develop as a trader. So join me by clicking on the top right hand corner of the screen and sign up for this powerful training workshop or visit elitetraderworkshop.com.